Dinner with death. <laughs> European cities really had a hard on for me in 1977. And not in a good way, more like a sociopathic Catholic priest kind of way. <laughs> Speaking of Catholic priests, it all started in Catholic Priest Central, Rome. Rome, the eternal city, fraught with delicacies, ruins, and doom. <laughs> I should mention that my family was emigrating from Russia, getting out while the get was good. We traveled through Europe in a freedom tour that wound its way through Czechoslovakia, then Vienna, where I almost literally ran into its homicidal public transportation system, chasing a toy car into a street as a tram descended on me and the said car. Luckily, my dad pulled my tiny dumb ass out of the way, and that narrow escape was just an amused bouche of terror feasting before what would befall me in Rome. My dirt nap appetizer was at the beach of the Mediterranean. While it may be hard to believe now, looking at my sun-drenched, sleek-muscled physique, I was not a very outdoorsy kid. More like a little pot-bellied, stick-armed, black-curled, green-eyed Buddha of a boy. So you can imagine that I loved nothing more than sweating in the sun on the hot sand oil stained by countless generations of Italian men in Speedos. And then there was the water, so blue, so mild, so clear, yet why is the music from Jaws playing in the background? <laughs> I reluctantly went into the water that day, inching my way away from the hydrocarbon sands and into the gentle wave, into the gentle waves lapping at the beach. My parents were far out in the waves, well past the break. Slowly I made my way towards them, not really comfortable, but not fearful of the waves. Sure, the waves were getting a bit bigger the further out I went, but I could just jump over them, a little higher each time, no problem, easy, kind of fun. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a big wave came crashing down on me. It pulled me along with it, under the water, down to the ocean bottom. I couldn't breathe or scream. I thought I would never reach air again. The cold, crushing hand of death had gripped my chest and was squeezing the frail but precious life out of me. And then it released me. All of a sudden, I was up and struggling towards the beach, my eyes rolling like a spooked horse running from wolves. I was escaping the dark and icy grip of death and was running with all the might of a pudgy five-year-old that I could muster, which meant I was getting exactly nowhere. In the meantime, my dad had been making his way towards me. He grabbed me up and brought me back to where we had left our towels. He comforted me while my mom made her way back as well, just to make sure I was still alive. The appetizer of death had been served, <laughs> spiced with the bitter tears of terror. The entree at Death's house were served by a little red fiat. A week after my sixth birthday, my new best friend and his family had left Rome to fly to America. I was sad that he was gone, so to make me feel better, my dad took me to a little convenience store and let me pick out whatever I wanted. I chose a collection of silver-colored cowboys and Indians that my brother and I could play with. While my dad was paying for them, I grabbed the package up and ran out of the store to show my awesome new gift to my brother and my mom who were waiting, waiting outside across the street. As I ran across the normally deserted street waving the plastic wrap package, I could see a look of horror on my mom's face, eyes wide, mouthing something to me and my brother looking on, lost and bewildered. Mid-stride, I turned my head to the right and saw the hood of a car coming right at me. My last thought was, but there's never anyone going down this street. <laughs> when I regained consciousness, I was in an ambulance. My right leg was in a splint, and my head was pounding like a timpani made of iron pounded by steel mallets. My dad was there with me, and I was grateful to see him. As the ambulance headed over to the hospital, it turned on its siren, a piercing, intermittent wail that cut through the traffic and through my already overwrought skull. Dad, I whispered, can they turn off the noise, please? <laughs> he just held my hand and answered, they can't. It helps them get to the hospital faster. It sounded crazy to me. How was a head-splitting noise going to make the ambulance go faster? <laughs> 
But I didn't want to be unreasonable, so I just said, it's okay. We can get there later if that sound is turned off. <laughs> Once we got to the hospital, the doctors there confirmed the EMT's diagnosis of a broken leg. They'd have to put me in traction to make sure the bone set properly. I would have to be brave. Why brave? Because the way the leg was to be immobilized was that a 10-inch stainless steel nail was going to be driven through my right heel. And this nail would then be tied to a suspension arrangement to keep my leg straight and assist the bone in healing properly. It's a fairly simple procedure, aside from the fact that the anesthetic was for Italian citizens only. Oh. When the centurion came over with a nine-inch nail, I, I mean, when the doctor came over with a nail gun, I steeled myself with a quick jab of a needle and determined to be brave. The doctor steadied my leg, pressed the gun against my heel, and fired it. <laughs> Luckily, I don't remember feeling any pain. I passed out. <laughs> Nevertheless, little Russian boy two, death zero. <laughs> the pain entree of having my leg broken and set with a steel nail was about to be followed by a dessert of stupidity and foolishness, nearly leading to my demise. Hand-operated vending machines in Rome sold small plastic bubbles with toys inside. Oh, God. I'd never had anything like that in Russia and had a fascination with getting the bubbles with the toys in them. When my mom asked me what I wanted while I was laid up in the hospital, I told her I wanted the plastic bubble with the toy inside. My mom found one of these vending machines and got me two bubble toys, a little green faceless man and a mini motorcycle. Turned out I liked playing with the smooth, clear plastic bubbles as much as I liked the toys. I'd play with the toys while I put the bubbles in my mouth and rolled them around in there. I know, weird, right? But that was me at six years old, lying in the hospital. One day while my mom was distracted by talking to a nurse, one of the little plastic bubbles got caught in my windpipe. I was still in traction and couldn't sit up to spit it out, and as I gasped for air, I got the bubble lodged more and more firmly in my throat. Black spots floated in front of my eyes, I couldn't hear anything over the waterfall of blood in my ears, and everything was very peaceful and calm. And then my mom, who must have been seeing me going all purple and blue from lack of oxygen, pounded on my chest, slapped a plastic cream puff of death out of my throat, <laughs> saved me again, just barely. Rome really had it in for me, but I survived all three attempts of my life in that infernal city. Next time I'm in the Seven Hills, I'll give the head pontiff a call to see if I can borrow the Pope Mobile. Though I'm not eager to dine with death again. Thank you.